Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, before we be begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your presence here this morning, and we thank you for all that you've been doing in our lives. We ask that you can heal our hearts and minds through your word, that we can partake of this word of life, and that it will be health to our bones. We pray for each person who's studying for truth. We know, Lord, that uh, we know little of all the things that there are to know. Uh, we know almost nothing. But we do know you, Lord, that you love us and care for us, and that you have a purpose for our, our lives. And so we just ask that you can reveal that to us, open it up to us, so that we can see um, your will for us, and that we can cooperate with the work that you're doing, not just in our hearts, but in the hearts of those around us. Be with us now through thy spirit in this study, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. I've been doing a bit of studying, but I always get bogged down. You know, it's like there's so many different things that that we notice. And, and so I started going over this study like I got up at two this morning. So I spent a bit of time going through things, reading things over, uh, working on my notes a bit, and then um, starting to draw these things on a line, which we're go going to do. So we know that we had already drawn this line addressing Stephen Jameson's birthday. And now this isn't really truly a line in that this is a chronological structure, but uh, we don't have a time at the end and, and so forth. And, you know, maybe we could, but there isn't a narrative attached to this particularly yet. So we're still analyzing the numbers and the dates and the symbols and seeing how they relate to our time. So it's still going to take us a little bit of time before we can draw this out line upon line. So we had seen these dates in relation to Stephen's birthday. And then yesterday we looked at dates in relation to my birthday. And we weren't looking for these in in either instance. We just were looking at the numbers and we were using 911 and sometimes 119 as a starting point. Some of these numbers are just the words themselves. Some of them, most of them are usually a group or a phrase uh, that's created by a couple or three Hebrew words. So it's it's there's lots of different opportunities we could say, to put these numbers together in various ways. But the fact that we end up getting the same dates or things that help connect dates by these numbers is, is something that's pretty unlikely to have happened by chance. Now, the ones that we dealt with yesterday were rather interesting in a way because it wasn't what I expected. Now, I knew I don't remember where when I had done this, but 818 four days is from 9-11 to uh, my birthday in 2024, so February 6, 2024. And we, when we added these words together, and this is going to be, so we had H769 and H416, we get 8185 days. And that brings us one day past my 61st birthday. And so I was thinking, well, you know, that kind of is, it's a miss, right? And, and that was using the phrase, which I, I probably should put the phrases there, but I mean, if you look at the footnote, you can see, uh, what it is, but it was addressing, uh, everlasting life, right? So that was everlasting life and, and the words there. So in everlasting life, we got kai is, is life. And everlasting olam, most people know olam as everlasting. It's a pretty common Hebrew word. So everlasting life. And then we were looking at shame. Shame, of course, is 1872 backwards, 2781. And we know that 1872 is a symbol for July 18, 2020. And then we had everlasting contempt. So it was, it was rather interesting that we could take everlasting life and everlasting contempt 
and we could connect them uh, to my birthday. By doing Everlasting Contempt, we go to December 25th, 2021, and count backwards. So we're going to the end of our 777 structure, counting backwards, and we come one day before my birthday, right? And that's going to be one day before, as you'll see down here in this footnote, of my birthday in 2001, right? So, and, and that's going to be my birthday on the biblical calendar in 2001. So that was when I turned uh, uh, 38 in 2001. So my 38th birthday and then my 61st birthday are marked. And what we said is that the shame and the everlasting contempt, well, this is about the everlasting gospel as illustrated within our line. And we see this contempt for the 777 days or the everlasting gospel uh, demonstrated by the U.S. and Canadian groups on December 25th, 2021. So they definitely express contempt. Uh, for that. And then we also had, yeah, so we took the other phrase, what was that one for? Seven, seven. So it's going to be the firmament. So just the word, the brightness of the firmament, right? So we took uh, the brightness of the firmament, H2096 and H7549, which gave us 9645. And if we count that from 9-11, it comes to my birthday in 2028. So, of course, that's still future, but that's when I turn 65. So my 65th birthday is marked there. And so we have, and, and with the fifth and the seventh, the thing I like about it is it's almost like it puts it in brackets, right? So it brackets February 6th. So you got, you know, February 5th, 2001, the day before. I turned 38, and then February 7th, 2024, the day after I turn um, 61, right? And then we got another one that's going to be four years later, that is 1,461 days later, is uh, in 2028 when I turn 65. Now, so the question we, we always have when we have our birthdays and things in these lines that that this isn't saying anything about us as individuals, you know, that we're saved or that somebody's a prophet or anything like that. It's just simply that we're part of these lines and we're attached to a message. So February 6th will symbolize the message or the light that has come through me on these lines, right? So I'm not the source of light, Christ is, but, but he's brought a lot of light to this movement in regards to chronology, obviously July 18, 2020, and lots of other things, and, and Stephen the same. So these things obviously are just illustrations of that. So people could, you know, read into it what they want, uh, but the reality is we don't think it makes anybody special or, expen or, you know, not expendable or something like that. We think that this is about God, not about us. Right. As individuals. And but some people, you know, they'll have and we, we looked in our um, symbolic use of number study on Sabbath, you know, people who. Almost and, and, and it's hard to tell exactly what somebody really thinks, but, uh, you know, he had the same same sort of thing where there's dates and birthdays and um, and so forth. And I've seen a lot where people I'm not saying that this guy did that or where people will have some vision on some day. Um, and then they cr construct the whole chronological uh, prediction based upon the date that they received a revelation. And I'm not saying that that can't happen or that, you know, that that automatically excludes what that person is saying is truth. What, what matters is what God's word says and what we're doing with that information. So God's word is the standard. Numbers can't supersede God's word because it, even though we have numbers, in order to interpret or understand those numbers, we need God's word to demonstrate that. So that's why I think it's uh, 
you know, it's it's not about the numbers per se. These are a witness and they help us understand, especially in the present truth application of things. But it, none of this goes beyond, you know, the plain reading of God's word. We, we already established these things in other ways. The numbers just help confirm that. And and they do help us to draw things on a line and put things together. So it's uh, it, it helps match things. But the, the basic ideas are already there from God's word. So so I started looking at some of these other numbers. And and um, but before we do that, I, I think I probably sh- we should draw these out on a line. So that's what I'm I'm going to do. I'm going to draw this out. I, I started, so I'm just I copied, you know, the one that we had for Stevens, and then I uh, pasted it. Started making some changes here. So now I'm putting my my actual birthday back here at the beginning. I'm putting April fifth, uh, twenty thirty here. So um, and you'll see why um, why I'm doing that. So what we'll do first, I'll show you the process and, and other people can do this as well. You know, so like I know Kelly gave me some dates. So if you go to palmoni.org and then you choose the calendar converter, you can get this calendar converter and you put a date in here in Gregorian or Julian or whatever you want to do. And then you uh, save the date and it will show up there in as a saved date. And so I'm just going to dump some of these birthdays in here. So we had the 2001 birthday and we had uh, the one in 2024 and then the one in 2028. So all of those had been marked. Now I'm going to put um, this uh, 2030 date that we have. This is April 5th, 20 to 30, the first day of the first month. I'm just putting it there um, because We've already connected April 5th, 2030 to uh, 9-11. And so I'm seeing if there's any connections that we have that can bring these together. Um, so I'm going to put 9-11, of course, in here because we're going to have these spans of time that show up uh, between these. Now, these ones here, the 2001, I'm also just going to put the day before, right, because that you can see. The 11th day of the 11th month in 2001 is February 5th, but it's that's the date I was born, the 11th day of the 11th month on the biblical calendar, 1963. So you can see that is, in a sense, my birthday, just not on the Gregorian calendar. And then I'm going to put the, the February 7th one here as well. So that's what going uh, one day past my birthday of this last year. So when I turned 61. Okay, so you can see I got a number of dates saved there, and you can see spans of time uh, between them. Now, uh, one of the things that we see uh, when we put these things into this to this grid column is you can see uh, different spans of time and how how much they are, right? So you can compare things that you weren't necessarily comparing at first. Now, when we look from the day I was born to April 5th, 2030, you'll see it's 24,530 days. Does anybody know the significance of that number? Some people might know. Well, it's uh, 817 months and 20 days. So that's why I put it in there. Now I'm gonna go back to this. So I'm gonna put here um, 817 months. In 20 days. So hopefully you can see that. Some people don't have a device that they could see it very clearly on. Okay, so that April 5th, 2030 date is witnessed to by all different uh, ways. And then um, we're going to put these other dates in here. So we're going to put, uh, I'm going to leave the 1989 there. Um, I'm going to put 911 here. Um, and then I guess I'm going to move that over. And then I'm going to put, we'll just call it uh, February 6th, 2001. Oh, that's got to go before, never mind. I've got to do it this way. 
except I'm going to put this as February 6th, 2001, and get these closer together. So this is 217, I believe, days with this over. So a lot of these numbers are going to change. Uh, I haven't changed that one yet on that other chart, which I got to do. Okay, now this obviously is going to change, but we're going to leave that for now. Okay, so I got that date, that date. We need the February 6th. You know, maybe I should put the 7th in here and the 5th over here. So those are the dates we had. February 7th, 24, and then February 6th and 28. Okay, so I think I got all the dates in there that I wanted. Just got to put in the, the spans of time and change change these. So the numbers that were important there is we had, and, and you can see I have them up here. So uh, I just need to write them in. So the 8185 is going to be from 911 to this February 7th date. So, so that is going to be this one. Makes it a little bit easier. We'll get this all straightened out. It'll make more sense. Okay, so we put that one in there. So this um, from February 5th to 2001. So we'll do that one. So this one's going to go back. So I need December 25th in there. So I'm going to have to move some of this over. I'll put it down on the bottom. Don't mind, I'll figure that out. Now, if anybody wants like this document that I have, this is a PowerPoint document. You know, I can send it to people and people can edit it if they want and do things with it. it didn't work the way I wanted. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of slides. I got like 600 some slides. Yeah, we could share it on Google Drive. Aran is asking me if we could put it on Google Drive and we could. Can you put it on um, the website, the Palmoni website as a document or not? Like the whole document. I don't know if that, okay, you could. I, I just put a link to it on the documents page. Okay. okay. Yeah, because the, the idea with this is um, uh, there's lots of slides and people could just, you know, create their own PowerPoint and take the slides they want and put them in a PowerPoint. And then you could also edit slide yourself and create these diagrams just by using the diagrams I have. It's a lot easier than starting from scratch because in a sense we have a template of how these, you know, these lines and stuff, you just copy and paste them. You can copy a whole, you know, page or whatever, a screenshot, right? It's the screen, you can copy that into another, another one and then you can modify it. That's what we're doing here. So, so this one that I was working on, I wanted to put in a December. So we got December 25th. And I, I mean, you, you, of course, these dates, a lot of them are going to change. So or you know, their spans of time are going to change. So I'm going to put this one down here. And that's going to be uh, December 25th, 2021. So it's the end of that structure, 777 structure. Um, that number is going to change. And then I would take this here. So that's going to be from here to here. And that's going to be this one. And send it to the back there so the line goes through. One's a little bit smaller print, but <clears throat> it could be too bigger. Okay, seven, seven structures. So Kelly's asking a question. So we know from November 9th, 2019, to December 25th, 2021 is the end of 777 days. And I call it a structure in that we have November 9th, 2019, 252 days later, we have July 18, 2020. And then 525 days later, we have December 25th, 2021. So 252, 525, these are um, inversions of each other. And, and they both add up, they add up to 777. And that's the basic 777 structure. We also have a 777 chiasm. Yeah, so the 777 structure is three sevens. Yeah. And, uh, but we first get that 777 way back in 2014 when I'm studying um, 
Daniel 70 weeks and we take the the first seven weeks, which is 49 years, and the last week, which is seven years, and we multiply them together and we get uh, 343 and we add it to the 62 weeks, that's 434, and that adds up to 777. And so the idea that we can take 343 and 434 and we get 777 or 252 and 525 and get 777. And we also do it where we take 161 and 616 and get 777. So we have spans of time within our lines that mark these different uh, points. So anyway, that, that should answer your question regarding the 777 structure. Hopefully that is sufficient. So, so we got that span of time. So we have the, I don't know, this thing isn't all proportional. Um, but so I'm just going to put in some of these spans of time. Didn't put 1989 in this one, but I'm going to put it in here. So 9773. So 9773 days there. And then here we're going to have 4,106. 4,106, and that's the 217 there. So this would actually be 218 when you count it from that date. So together, um, those are going to be 4324 days. So we've had that number before. Um, but we're not going to put that one in there. We don't, that's not one of the spans we're looking at. And then from 911 to 2024, it's going to be, that's the one that's 8,185 days. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly, you can do this, put it in the chart, pile one eye and see what you get. So I got that span of time in. Okay. So this should have been from, 911, that's where it's wrong. So this would be over here. I'm going to move a lot of this stuff over. Okay. <clears throat> so we got the different birthdays marked. This one in 2028. I'm just going to put this here and just simply taking those footnotes and putting them in there. Okay. So we got oh, that one I already had. It's this last one. Yeah, so February 6th. So that one's going to go from 9-11 to February 6th. So I don't need, so this is going to be 1,461 days, because that's how many days there are in four years. And 9-11 to 24, we already have. So we can just put this one right here. We don't need this. Okay. So that one fits in there. This is from February 6th, that's going to be 789 days. So we'll just put that in there. And so we got all the spans of time. We got this. I'm going to get rid of this bracket. Just do it like this. It's a little cleaner. Okay. Rid of that. Okay. So when we look at this diagram here, um, we can see how these, these different dates fit together. Get rid of this. And this one was this one. So I could just copy this. Okay. And then this one, I guess we don't really need. So it's just, we got basically one, two, three, three spans with the February 6th connection. And then we have that, uh, I put that April 5th, 2030 in there. And what this is just showing is the connection between February 6th and April 5th, 2030, which April 5th, 2030, if we remember, that's connected to 9-11 in the story of Ezra. So there's 354 months. So that's kind of from that study. So we can see that 9-11 is tied in there. It's tied into my birthday. And then December 25th, 2021 is tied into my birthday through these words. But it also connects this whole line. So whether we needed the whole line or not, and I'll adjust this later before I put it in the, in the paper. But it just helps you visually see this. And I don't know if there's anything that jumps out at me other than, you know, the fact that these numbers fit in this way. 
Um, so that sort of framing of February 6th. And, and who knows, maybe there is uh, something else that we could see from this that we don't see right now. So there, we drew the diagram, we have that done, and that finishes that off. So let's go back to the paper. Now I wanted to look at something else. This is kind of jumping around a little bit, but I started looking at the other verses further on. And, and the one that I drew my attention, so this one is really interesting. So we know in Daniel 12, verse 7, is when it's going to mention, uh, we have the question, right? How long shall be, what's the word? Uh, heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, and it shall be for times, times and a half. And, and that's in answer to the question, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders, right? So you have... We have the word end, right? So that's 7093. We know that it connects with Stephen Jameson's birthday. Um, but then we have this, this, this answer to this question. Now we, we know it's 1260 years, but I looked at time, times, and in half. And I thought, well, I could just add time and times together, right? Because it's doubled. But could we say it's also triple because we have time and then times? So what if I tripled? So I'll show you what, what I'll do here. So we have these Hebrew numbers uh, for Moed, 4150. And, you know, at first I just kind of added them together. I said, well, it's there twice. So I'm just going to go, you know, 4150 added that. And I get 8300. And then I would add uh, 2677, right? And I'd get this number, 10,977. Now, we, we've done a lot with with these sort of spans. If, if I divided this into days, it would give me 30 years. And, and we know that it's 957 is 30 years exactly. So 10,977 is 30 years and 20 days, right? So, and you'll see, you'll just subtract 30 and I'll multiply this again by 365.25. So you'll see it's 30 years and 19.5 days, right? But it ends up being basically 30 years and 20 days. Depends on where you start, right? So half the time it would be 30 years and 19 days. The other half, it'd be 30 years and 20 days because there's, depends where you are in the leap year cycle, right? Okay. So, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But then I said, well, well what if I did this, 4150, oops, and I did it by three. So I took time times, so I just doubled it for times. So I just multiply this by three. And then add uh, 2677. Now I get 15,127. So this number is really interesting. So we can do a few things with it. We could say, well, what if this is the number of months? So if it was the number of months, how many years would it, would it be? So in order to do that, I would just say, well, there's 12 months in a year. So I just divide it by 12. And so I get 1260 years and some months, and that number of months, so I just minus 1260, and multiply by 12, right? And then I'll get seven months. So it's going to be 1260 years and seven months. Is that significant that we can take the Hebrew numbers, which is going to describe 1260 years, and it's going to give us 1260 years and seven months? Is that significant? Now, we can say, well, it's not exact. You know, it's it's got that extra seven months. So so is that is that a miss or a hit? If, if you want to look at it that way. Any thoughts on that? Do people think that that makes sense, that that's 1,260 years? And so, again, we're just going to do it. 4150 times 3 plus 2677. 
divided by 12. For some reason it's not saving it over here. I don't know why that is. Anyway, <clears throat> so 1260 years and seven months. So is that significant? Is anybody going to comment on it? Could we miss it by seven months so it's not valid? just wonder why it's not saving anything. There's nothing saved to your memory. Let me close that. Try that again. <clears throat> you just want me to keep going on? Nobody's going to comment on that? Okay. I, I just want to do this again. 4150 times 3. Like, is it valid to multiply it by three? What if you What if you divide it by uh, the Gregorian month instead of thirty days per month, three hundred and sixty-five and a quarter? Okay. Well, I'm just dividing the. I'm just saying it's a number of months, so you, that would produce a different number of days. It's still gonna. It doesn't matter whether I'm using Gregorian months or, you know, Islamic months, right? So. Um, 30 day months still gets 1260. Well, there's still 12 months in a year. Yeah. Well, because I'm not, I'm not dividing well, by, it's not the number of days, right, you're not, the number of months. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So it's just the number of months. But yeah, if I wanted to figure out how many days it is, um, then that, that would also be something that I took into consideration. So like on the Jewish calendar, like if if we're going to look at the number of months in 1260 years, for instance, so let's just do this here. So if you have 1260 years on the Jewish calendar, they actually have more months than we do in 1260 years, right? That's because their months are shorter. So the number of months in 1260 years on the biblical calendar is going to be different. Now, it's going to be more than... Uh, 15,127, right, in 1260 years. Because what you're going to get for every, every 19 years, um, they're going to have seven extra months. That is, if I took this and I divided this by 235. So 235 is the number of months in a metonic cycle. So, um, so there would be five metonic cycles and a bit, right? So, you know, if that was months, and so, you know, uh, we do it this way, uh, five times 19. I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing wrong? 235. Well, yeah, so that's, that doesn't really help. So I have to think about the, so the number of days. Hmm. I have to think about that, how I would do that. Yeah, because they're going to have for every 19 years, so we divide by 19, that's what I'm going to do. So there's 66 times 7. So there's 464 uh, months that uh, I would add to 15,120. So when we would have uh, 1,260 years, we're going to have uh, 15,120, right? The seven extra months is, is not there. But if you're on the Jewish calendar, you would end up with, uh, 15,120. You'd have, uh, 15,584 lunar months, right? Point two or whatever. So it wouldn't even be exact in 1260 years. That kind of makes sense. So that they have more months in 1260 years than we do. And, and, you know, so it's just that 1260 years, if you're taking the months, it's going to be a different number of days. If you're using different number of a different length of a month, right? Okay. So, so just so people understand that, you know, what we're doing here. So as a symbol, we get 1260 years from this number and seven months. So we would have to say, is it valid that I'm tripling the word 4150, the Moed? Because it's time times and then in half? Yes. Right? So that's valid. Okay. And then um, adding that together, so the half is just the 2677. Now, if it had been 2670, 
if that was the word half, it would have been exactly 1260 years. But we got this 1260 years and the seven months left over. And, and so somebody could say, well, you know, it's kind of a coincidence, but, but is the seventh month, seven months, I was going to say, is the seventh month important? Well, the seventh month is, right? Because that's the month in which you have the Day of Atonement. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is we've already used like 2,300 months, for instance, right? 2,300 months. Remember, we had this 2,300 months. And that was a period of 186 years, 67,920 days. And that went from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030, April 5th, 2030. is 2,300 months, right? 186 years. That is April 1st, 2030 is the 187th, the start of the 187th year from the end of Miller's prediction, Right. We count 186 days. The 187th day is October 22nd, 1844. But if we count a day for a year, 186 years, the 187th year begins on April 5th, 2030. Now, when we did that, you know, some people wanted to say, well, you know, that's going to be like the Day of Atonement. That's going to be when Jesus comes back and things like that. And actually, this guy, Danny Woon Hai Kim, a uh, guy from uh, South Korea, um, who I've known since 2014 on social media. He did phone me like a couple months ago. But, you know, him and I have had discussions and he's a little, little wacky, but he notices things other people don't notice. And he had noticed this 2300 uh, months is 186 years. But he counted, he didn't count the actual days. He just counted it to, um, uh, because he believes Miller's prediction was correct that, you know, the prophetic periods ended on March 21st, 1844, and he doesn't accept the seventh month movement. And so he was going to have Jesus coming back on April 5th, 2030, because that's the first day of the first month. A lot of his stuff doesn't make sense once you actually look at it, but he gets these ideas that, that uh, sometimes are interesting. And so I dismissed this, but I had it in the back of my mind. And when we got that first day of the first month from the week of Christ study, then, and then we studied this out a bit like a couple of years ago. Um, then we, we saw that we had this symbolic date and we could then tie it to nine 11 through Ezra seven to 10 through the 354 days that we have in the story of Ezra. Right, because it starts on the first day of the first month in 457 and ends on the first day of the first month in 456. So anyway, so we have things where we look at months, 2300 months and 1260 or this 15,127 months that gives us 1260 years. So we have like 186 years, number of months is significant, 1260 years, the number of months. So, you know, there are probably more is going to come from this as we start to look at this in more detail. But just just here on the surface, we have this. Um, I think it's it's significant. OK, now, the other thing we could do is we could take that and look at it as days. Right. So if you took. Obviously, we could say, you know, it's 15,127 years, but that's not going to matter. But we could take it as days. And if you divide it by 365.25, you'll see that it's 41 years and about 160, 150. So minus 41 times 365. 151, so 152 days. Now, I mean, maybe, maybe it fits somewhere in the lines, right? So if we looked at, um, I just don't know where we, you know, we started from obviously, um, 1989. It's going to bring us, let me see. Yeah, I know it's going to bring us past 2030, probably into 2031. Right, so. So if we start 1990, yeah, it actually brings us to April 10th, 2031. 
<clears throat> which uh, or to April 9th, uh, depends if we do an inclusive count. If we go to April 9th, 2031, that's March 27th, Julian. So it could be a symbolic date. And it's the wave sheaf offering in 2031. So it's Nissan 16. So, so maybe that we could use it as that as well. So I'm, I'm going to put that in the footnotes. So go back to the paper. We could also, I'm going to do first here. Seven days from November 9, 1989 to um, April 9, 2031. Just as a symbol, right? Um, which is Nissan 16. Or we can count it as the months. And then we have some other things. We could look at it as hours. So you know, 15,127 hours as time. Go back to the calculator. Okay, so 15,127 hours, and you would then divide this by, instead of 12, you'd divide it by 24. And you're going to get half of 1260, basically. So it's going to be 630 days, right? So it's not going to be years because you're using hours. Uh, so 630 days, and um, and then a decimal. And that decimal is just going to be seven hours. So you get 630 days and seven hours. So again, we, we have a symbol there. Now, now 630, of course, we have half of 126 is 63. We have that in our lines. So we could say that this, this fits in somewhere. Um, and may, maybe it's a span of time that we could put in our, our lines. I don't know. So. I'm just going to do something here. You know, if we did it as an inclusive count from, you know, that end of the 1260 from when Jeff speaks for the first time, right? 1260 days. And um, so if you count after July 18th, then you count 630 days. It brings you to April 9th, uh, 2022, which is March 27th on the Julian calendar. And then you'd count another 630 days and it bring you to the end of December 30th, uh, 2023, right? So, so, you know, we could say, well, it's got this April 9th, March 27th date attached to it. You know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> but as a span of time, we could do that. And, and then we have uh, minutes. So if we take it as minutes, you know, there's 1,440 minutes in a day. So if you put it into days, so you divide it by the minutes, it's going to be 10 days, 12 hours, and 7 minutes. And the interesting thing there is we get the 12 and the 7. But all that is is if you take, you know, 10 days, 10 days is 14,400 minutes, and then the 12 hours is going to give you uh, half of that. Right. It's half of a day. So that's going to give you half of 1440 is 720. Right. And then you have a seven. So you have 727 minutes. Now, 727 minutes also is the symbol because that's the symbol for July 27th. And then, of course, we have 127 or 12 and seven. And that can represent backwards July 21st. Uh, so the 10 days by themselves represent the 144,000, but we were already using minutes, right? It's just that it's 10 days. So it's just 10 times as much as one day. Um, and then you have the 12 hours and the seven minutes. So 727 minutes. Does that make sense to people? So, so we're saying that this symbol, a time times and then half, is a symbol with the Hebrew numbers that relates to time and uh, relates to the 1260 years that it's talking about. Now, the 1260 years that it's talking about in Daniel 12, verse 7, right? So that's the other thing is the 12 and the 7 refer to the verse. So it's, it's self-referential. So it's, it's, this is 12, verse 7, this verse, where we have this time, times and a half. 
But this is the time times and a half, not from 538 to 1798, but it's the time times and a half from uh, 723 to 538. You know, maybe it's possible that if we looked at that period of time, if we had a specific date, you know, Stephen, if he was here, he might give us what date we would want to have in 538. And and because I think he does have a date in 538 that he marks. And then we counted, you know, 1260 years and seven months. Maybe we come to a significant date in 723, like maybe the, you know, the first day of the first month or something like that. I don't know. But, but I don't have that information at my fingertips right now. But does that kind of make sense that we, 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 we recognize that this symbol is built here into the Hebrew numbers? of the thing that is there. And, and that is 1260 years and seven months. The seven months itself is a symbol. It references the seventh month in which you have the 10th day of the seventh month, which is the 187th day of the year. But it also just represents the idea that this is part of the seven times. That it's half of the seven times. And so even that word half, um, even though it's relating to a half of a time, which is 180 days, right, or 180 years. Um, but it can still also reference to the fact that this time times and a half is a half of the seven times itself. Okay, does that make sense? So, so to me, it's it's very remarkable that that we have these types of things occur. Now, you know, some people would like them to be more exact. You know, they'd like well. You know, things landed right on my birthday, not one one day after, one one day before. Or if this was exactly 1260 uh, years, if this was months, right? Uh, if we took the months, you know, some people would want to have it exact. But the thing is, the symbols that are there are, are significant. And I think it gives it actually more significance in the way that it shows up, right? To me, the ones bracketing, you know, one before and one after, creating kind of like brackets, I think that makes it even more interesting than if they were both February 6th. That's my opinion. Maybe it's a bit subjective. Okay. Any other questions about this? Now, we do this analysis, and then we, because we're making an application to our time, So the main thing we see when we go back um, to verse 2, many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, as we started, that this is about the message of the 777 days starting on November 9th. The shame is July 18th, and the everlasting contempt is December 25th, 2021, right? And we get the shame because it's a symbol of July 18th. We have the everlasting life. That's going to be when they're woken up, right? And we're saying that 9-11-2019 is in our history in this line in the everlasting gospel that's being illustrated here goes to 9-11. And 9-11 is, of course, when we wake up. But November 9th, 2019, we also wake up. It's just a much more uh, zoomed in focus, right? So we have some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's going to give us that November 9th, 2019 everlasting because they awake to everlasting life. And then we have the the shame, July 18th, and then the everlasting contempt, December 25th, 2021. And so all of those dates are illustrated. And then they tie in sort of framing my birthday, which is just becomes a symbol, not not anything about me as a person, just a symbol for that message of July 18, 2020. Okay, so that makes sense to people. So then we we go on and we say, and they that be wise. So we know, we we looked at the wise and the shining. So this is kind of where we finished off. So this shine means to teach. And we had looked at um, Joel. Um... Do you remember the verse, Angela? 223. 223. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, 
for it's given you the former rain moderately. And it's kind of interesting that word moderately. Uh, I should show you what I'm looking at. So the word moderately is 6666. Now, you can see that the word righteousness is 6663. Um, we've seen that other places. Um, so this, this word is related. So it, it now it translates, it's, it's tzedaka. So it's like tzedak is righteousness. Uh, this just has a, a different ending. And, and it is rightness. Subjectively rectitude, objectively justice, morally virtue, or figuratively prosperity. Justice moderately. Now, when you think about moderate, well, that means a judicious reign, right? So not too much, not too little. That's, that's, that's why they're translating this word righteousness as moderately. So he hath given you the former reign moderately. Um, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Now, we know uh, the translators, when they they give an alternate translation for this, and that alternate translation is the former rain is going to be or teacher of righteousness instead of former rain. Now, this is the word uh, mora. Also teacher or teaching, also the early rain. So the reason why it refers to the early rain as a teacher, but why would the early rain be a teacher? Like just, you know, in the natural world, what is it doing there? Oh, seeds to sprout. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's beginning something. So, um, you know, I'm not sure of the whole etymology of this. I'm just going to. So it says um, means to like flow as water. To lay or throw, especially that is an arrow figuratively to point out as an aiming the finger to teach. Uh, cast direct in form. So uh, lay, show, shoot uh, teacher through. So. So it, it, it's probably something that's more like an idiom to refer to it as rain, because it really just means um, like to flow like water or to shoot an arrow, like, like an archer. But but that's how they translate. That That's the word that they use for the early rain, is they basically call it a teacher. And, and the teacher of righteousness, right, moderately. So he hath given you a teacher of righteousness, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. Now, this word rain is a different word, right? That's just geshem, that means rain or a shower. The former rain, so it's going to repeat the form, that word former rain, uh, mora, and the latter rain, malkoshe, malkoshe. Uh, the spring rain, right? So now the former rain we know in Israel is in the fall, or it's really in the winter, right? Late fall, November, December. That's when they get the former rain because they plant their crops um, in the fall. And then they get the, the former rain or the early rain in the fall. And then in the spring, you're going to have the latter rain. And that's going to uh, be there at the time that the grain's going to ripen. So it's going to help it fill out and then, and then it's going to ripen as the weather gets warmer again, right? So you've got the former rain in the fall, in the winter, and then the latter rain in the spring. Okay. So we have this, this translation, the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Yeah. So we could, Angela has a comment in there, which is a good one. Now, and, and this word moderately, just uh, dealing with um, birthdays. So 6666 is the number of days between Dwight's birthday and Iran's birthday. And 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 is the number of days between me and uh, Dwight. 
I believe. So it's kind of interesting. So between me and Dwight? Yeah, between Dwight and I, 1,296 days. <clears throat> so, so this deals with these teachers of righteousness, right? Not that we're Christ or anything like that, but it's just the former reign comes through this, and it's going to be a teacher of righteousness according to righteousness is, is the idea. When, that's the way that they're going to translate this. And the whole point, of course, is that we're dealing with this, the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. So we have this word shine, and that's going to be to admonish. And we have the wise, we're going to admonish as the brightness of the firmament. Right? So um, I'm trying to remember what we did there with that. Yeah, so the firmament, that was uh, footnote 77. So that's the brightness of the firmament. Yeah, that's the one that's going to be from 9-11 to February 6th, uh, 2028. Okay, so the brightness of the firmament. And so they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. So it's going to, again, connect to me, but it's about this message, right? And then they're going to turn many to righteousness, right? So that's where we get the 6663. So the word righteousness, the 6663, but also 6666 produces righteousness as well. And as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Uh, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Now we've looked at the time of the end before, uh, the 6256 and 7093. And I'm trying to remember, I know we connected it with Stephen's birthday. Yeah. So Stephen's birthday in, in 2021 from 9-11 is 7093. And... I think that was the main place that we had it. And then we had 7092, the number of days between when we added one of them together. So hopefully people are finding this useful as we go through it in this fashion. So we, we still have more numbers we can look at, but uh, how much time do we have? About 10 minutes. Now, one of the things about Daniel, his name, we notice it's 1840. Now, now, Daniel himself does not directly address, you know, Josiah Lich's prophecy or anything. We haven't really directly connected him in that way, right? But we have indirect connections to 1840. So what would be the primary indirect connection of Daniel to August 11th, 1840? It's, it's, it's not a trick question, but it should be obvious. How do we how do we connect Daniel to August eleventh, eighteen forty? It's it's not it's not super direct, it's indirect, but how do we do that? Nobody's gonna attempt to answer that question. Okay, so there's a number of things that we can do here. So I'm gonna take no, we don't got a lot of time, ten minutes, but I think this this will be interesting. So because we haven't addressed that before. We haven't addressed it. But I think this is the best place to address it. So we're going to put a footnote here. Now, so one is we know uh, H1840. We can add it to Daniel's going to shut up the words. So he's going to seal this book, right? So Daniel sealed 1840 plus uh, the word for shut up is 5640. So we're going to add that together. So I'll do it this way here. So I'll let you see what I'm doing. So we've got 1840 plus 5640. And we're going to get this number. Now this number is interesting, 7480, because it's divisible by 187. And it produces 40. Okay. So we have a symbol, 187, July 18, 2020, right? 
we have 40, and that can tie us to 1840, I guess. But that, that's not how I'm connecting. I mean, I'm just saying that we have these numbers here. So how would we connect Daniel to Josiah Lich's prophecy? What is what is the key that ties these things together? You guys are a little bit shy today. I know Dwight's not here now. Jeff's not here now. Okay, can we say, because we know Ezekiel is connected to Leviticus 26, and we know Daniel's connected to Leviticus 26. So that connects Daniel and Ezekiel together. And we know with Ezekiel, we're going to have the 391 and a half. We're also going to, in a sense, have that with Daniel as well. Um, because, you know, he's going to be uh, there in that period of time during the Babylonian captivity. So he's part of the fulfillment of Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26 is the proto-Daniel. So we have 1840 for his name, the Hebrew number. And we know that the year-day principle is important in Daniel's prophecies. We know that August 11th, 1840 empowers that message. So there's quite a few different connections. We can also go to uh, Daniel 11, verse 40. So Daniel 11, verse 40, which is you know, 40 times 187 is... Daniel's book being shut up. And in verse 40, you're going to have the two times of the end. And these are connected to, of course, the arrival of the first message, which is empowered on August 11th, 1844, or 1840, pardon me. And then the arrival of the first message in our history, which is going to be empowered at 9-11. So there's lots of different connections that we can make to that. I was thinking of First Kings 1840 also, <clears throat> where the prophets of Baal or Baal are slain at the brook Kedon, Kishon. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I count that number of days from 9-11, so if I go to 9-11 and I count 7480 days, that brings me to March 5th, 2022. I count from my birthday in 2001. It's going to bring us to July 31st, 2021, and July 18 on the Julian calendar. I don't know. Yeah, the 8, 11, and 9, 11. Yeah, August 11th and 9, 9, 11. Brings us one year past the, the date that we get in Ezekiel. So instead of 2020, it brings us to 2021, which is kind of interesting actually. So I need to make a footnote of that. Again, so 5640 equals 7480 days from I'm going to go from 2021. Okay. And it also is 187 times 40. So lots of little interesting things that we can find as we we delve into these details. Now we're still we still have to you know put in this present truth application exactly where we would fit this in. So I think that we're gonna have some right. So obviously it is connecting to our time with that July 31st and July 18 date. Connecting my birthday. So this one ties into my birthday again uh, in 2001, um, which you already have from the preceding verse. And then we have to look at some of these other numbers and how they're going to fit into that. And I know that there's already some connections that we're going to find. Okay. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? not let's pray dear father in heaven thank you for the study this morning we ask for your continued presence throughout this day yes we're thankful for the rain here outside um and uh for the the latter rain and the former rain that uh refreshes us spiritually enlightens our minds and our understanding and that uh, causes your truth to grow in this earth. 
We ask for your angels' care and protection today, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.